Far from the influences of Earth, mythical creatures have been hidden away remotely for eons of time. These hybrid creatures flee here from humans, and while some are merely abominations, others are found to possess living souls. The throne wars wage on for the very souls of the creatures discovered here. The brood, intent on enslaving them, forcing them to strip mine this small planet of its rare elements. Supernovae that the brood feed on are set to consume the sky and this little planet. Yet an unforeseen threat lurks, and something here is not as it seems. And those who come soon lose themselves. Suiel has just arrived, and she has discovered that a virus is eating up their memories. She urgently wants to warn Zack about this, while she can still remember what it is. Yet Zack isn't listening to the lying lips of a brood warrior. You must choose your path: save the creatures, or enslave them to mine this planet raw. Well, good afternoon. That's a little intrepid introduction. And make sure you go live, playmore.com. Sign up for our video game test to Thunder. And I'm the founder and game producer for IMU Studios. And we're making a game called Thunder. And we play Throne Wars. And the uh, game takes place right here. A little place called the Milky Way Galaxy. And if you're Earthling, travel down the Karina Arm, you end up at the Stellar Jewel Box NGC 3603. NASA took its satellite image, looks just like this. And we put a little planet there, Planet Nebulous Prime. As you zoom in on it, you can see we've got a little bit of a layout here for what we're building. And what's absolutely amazing, and this has been an amazing week, and it's only Tuesday, is that uh, we've got Forever, Bane, and Excalibur up uh, in one load, and it's uh, you know it's just beautiful. Jeff has just an amazing job of that. I'm so happy with that. Anyways, we'll, and we'll be showing you some of that, but not running around in it yet. But I was running around in it just a couple minutes ago. So, anyways, we'll be doing Intrepid again today, and uh, just keep building on things. Uh, the Liker areas are all coming together. Models, uh, you know. Anyways, just it's absolutely amazing week. So uh, this is the order of development that we're gonna do. So just to kind of get a sense of how everything's going. So we're working on Forever, Excalibur, and Underground now, and then we're gonna be adding in the Liger area. Uh, we've got the training quest coming along, so that you'll be trained as you enter into the game and learn how to play. So it's actually very, very amazing. Uh, I'm kind of blown away that this is just so far beyond anything I've ever imagined it would be because you design this stuff and then you put the team in and the team just really takes it to the next level so I'm just I'm very excited this has been a fantastic week and like I said it's just getting started anyways we have a metagame in our game and it is you know uh, when when you win and lose territories or, or arenas you're taking territories so I, I'm, a, my, I'm not even in order anymore so I'm just enjoying this too much but anyways, uh, you can see what happens when it's neutral. That's what happens at Bear Isle. And uh, so I've pulled out. There's so much going on. I've just had to pull all kinds of stuff out. So now we're. this is our presentation. So this is all recorded, all ready to go. We're just wrapping up. We've got a little bit more paperwork to do and wrapping up the 2020 year. And uh, then we're going to be presenting this at a very high level. And these are all the potential publishers. Uh, you know, I, I don't even know if we'll have to knock on any of these doors. Uh, it's absolutely amazing uh, as we take these steps. So look at that Thunder Rocks. Uh, so this is our 84 episode story arc that we're creating. And uh, so uh, we've got a pilot script and we've got our TV pitch Bible. Uh, we're just creating the new versions of those. And, uh, that's laid out like this. So I had a little bit of time to kind of update some of this stuff. So uh, this is, you know, this is from Netflix himself showing exactly how to create the pilot. So that's your first TV show. 
and this is your season map. I got this changed into 10, 11, 12, so we got uh, 12 seasons here, and just kind of clean this up a little bit, making it look a little bit better, and uh, kind of guiding the, the writing team with this, and then Dan Harmon's story circle, so very, very exciting uh, getting into streaming television. Uh, that really, you know, the, the video game is a fantastic thing, but a lot of times the story's an afterthought. It, it's kind of, they throw it on, they do single player, and, you know, the multiplayer aspect doesn't have a lot of story element to it or, or reasons why it even exists. And this is completely different when you're working on a streaming television show. So Sheila has done up the kin foliage. So this is, I showed this last week, but I didn't say it was kin, but yeah, it's kin. So there's a tree. I, I, I might've said it was going to have a kin logo on it and a flower. She's going to do views for this, but I thought, you know, let's just move it forward fast. And this is what she got done this week. This is the brood tree. So, you know, this is just common foliage, but uh, everybody says, you know, we need to go more because the whole story is that the planet is seeded by earth. That's the original story. And then the team's like, well, you know, we need more alien stuff. This isn't Earth. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's what we're looking at. Here. All right. So Rebecca, a few weeks ago, got a muck done. And then last week, she got the views done and had some choices for the wings, A, B, and C. And this week, here they are, a muck's wings. She did a fantastic job. Like, I look at that and go, wow. You know, so a muck is one of our playable characters. So there's the front and back, and then there's the side and the top, so it's all ready for 3D development. And here's Zachariel in the game, playable. I'm going to be playing as Suiel today, and so we're working on our short. It has Zachariel and Suiel in it, so we've got our main characters that are already ready to go. And there's Zach in the game. And Zach's wings. Now, this has already been assigned. We've got, so Rebecca did the concept art here. Uh, next week, I'm going to be showing you what Zach's wings now look like. So what you saw there earlier was just a placeholder. And then these wings that will fold and disappear will be uh, presentable. So that's uh, where we're looking at. And there's Suiel, who I'll be playing today. And Rebecca has her wings done. This is a sign, too. These are in development in 3D. So that's going to show up in the game. All right. And what they look like folded. Now, so it's, this is me taking some screenshots for what Jeff's been producing. This isn't even what I just saw. I don't, I, I don't have screenshots for that. I just went and did a quick run around. But uh, it's absolutely amazing. This is where the Brood Fortress is going to go, and I'm going to show you that in a few seconds. And so this is Excalibur for the new maps. This is Bane, so that's connected. So Bane's actually an underground level. So this is what's above ground and what that looks like. And I sure hope I have these all labeled right, because I took the screenshots. I'm like, I hope this is right. But I'm pretty sure this is right. Bane. And then forever, of course, that's forever because you see the placeholder for the Kim Castle. And then you can see way over here, so this is Excalibur, this is Bane. You can see the levels are not quite lined up, but Jeff's got them a lot more lined up now. And then we'll be able to uh, kind of blend all that together. So anyways, that's going really well. And so we're looking at forever. So these are all, everything's just kind of placeholders right now. So this is going to be the Brood Fortress. Just kind of a mock-up for what we're going to be doing. Ever. So here's what Parrish has done for Uriel's Brood Fortress. So he gave us a couple of ideas, a couple more ideas, and then he delivered this. And so the one on the left is the one that we're going to pick. That's what we're going to build. And then all the rest, I don't know, might be something else. We'll see. And this is what uh, we've got done up for forever in the Brood Fortress. Like, uh, uh, Raggy's done this. And this is now being built. As you can see, this is 3D. So Nicholas is doing the 3D models. And here's another, the main model for the building. And we're going to be doing a bunch of things. Like, you'll be entering in the basement here, in the main floor here. And uh, so little by little, we're getting it done. So I introduced this last week. Raggy has done the Forever Kin Castle. 
So he's moving this week, so nothing new to show, but uh, he'll be back in force fully next week. And this is a Lager Castle. So Fear did this up, and Nicholas has been doing the model. So you can see the model here. And Nicholas has a bunch of more pieces done for the marketplace and, and things like that. He's slowly getting those little pieces done. Nothing new to show this week, but that's that. All right, so here is my screenshots uh, for um, Intrepid. <laughs> the thing is there's so many levels now. It's getting good. All right, so there's the hole in the mountain that was caused by Balaam Landing. Scott's just working on doing some debris. There's the, the um, uh, <laughs> central fountain that Boyan did up. You know the team's getting big when you can't remember who everybody is. So it's just uh, growing in leaps and bounds. More people knocking at the door. People getting really excited about this. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. So this is the fountain area. And I've gone through here and done a bunch of simplification. The problem with Intrepid, there's there's a mountain of problems with this. Yeah, but that's the, ver the the story of a vertical slice. You know, it's just kind of to make it a little bit. Oh, so here is the Lager Village. Sorry, Lager Marketplace. Man, I gotta think about what I'm saying before I say it. So this is a close-up of it. And then Sophia has done up the Lager Guard. And you can see what he looks like in color. Now, remember, everything's a placeholder until we ship. So we'll be using uh, some updated texture systems on these. And this is the Lager Captain of the Guard. So he's done. He is uh, ready for animation. And that's what uh, Leander did up. That's the original concept. And then what the 3D model looks like, of course, from behind. If you want to see it from the front, again, here it is. And then what the model looks like. So we made a few changes, but uh, all in all, did a great job on that. All right, so back to Intrepid. The Lego Prince. Now, there's a new version of this. I don't have any in yet. It is busy here. Um, things are just flying. In fact, you know, I've got the things that I need to do. And what time is it here? It's 3 o'clock. And uh, on a Tuesday, <laughs> I haven't even... This is the only thing that I've got done is this, this uh, show and tell. So, you know, i got to get this out every week. Got to praise the people that are doing the work. Uh, you know, the Lagger Princess. She's the reason we have so many people signed up to play this game. And here we go through the village and stuff. And uh, this level is just absolutely beautiful. So I can't wait until we have everything developed at this level. But, you know, it's all a process. There's the Strangler Force, the Strangler Plant, and the Temptation Plant. And some shots of that. Treeman 12, Treeman 1. And I've simplified, so we've got far less Phoenixes flying around up there and doing stuff. Trying to simplify the map now, getting rid of all the excess animation. That's all programming anyways. And if there's one part of this that's lacking, it's, you know, the programming. Uh, you know, we got to put together a much higher level programming team uh, to pull this off. But, you know, we got the playable prototype. Everything's done to my specification, but now it needs to be done at a much higher level. Uh, programming is definitely something we spend a lot of time planning and laying it out and then accomplishing it. But at least we got the things so I can show, you know, the gameplay I can say, this is what I want, and then they can figure out how to do it. All right, so now we're going to go down. We're looking at the Kin Gate. All right, heading up to the Kin Castle. This is where we're going to do our short... So it's going to be a promotional video, just kind of showing some of the gameplay and the characters and all that kind of stuff. And that is the Kin Castle. So you're coming into the Kin throne room here, looking back at what we call, this is what we call the throne pit. So always there's a kind of a danger zone, things that you can fall into. And that's what that is. And then there's the lifts. And there's the top, so looking at the 
Ken throne room and the four lifts around it. There's the throne. Ken throne. But for the life of me, I can't figure out what this blue one is. I actually went and I thought, oh, well, you know, because it seems like the characters walk on top of that. So I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, it's just a uh, vertical slice, so we'll be tossing all that stuff anyways. So looking at the top of the throne room with the open passageway so that you can get in there. In the future of the game, that will actually close. The players will be able to close that. They'll be able to close all the entrances and control them to a certain amount. And there's the tin icon. Wonderful update of it. That's a newer version of it. And what Nicholas did for the towers. That's just awesome. And this is the access to the home tree, which is the supply room. So it's not that visible or understandable from below, but when you fly up, you can land on that, go up inside. And there's all these goodies. All right. Looking at the beach. Looking at... So our vertical slice, we're only supposed to do this area. But it's, it's hard to stop. It's hard to know where to stop. So I'm very happy that we got a playable map together. And uh, while it's not perfect, it definitely shows what the team is capable of. And there we go. There's the, the brood fortress. This is the gate to the fortress. And through the gate. And then we come to... So that's the brood throne pit. And this is going to be... Uh, a walkway. It's an energy walkway that can disappear. It doesn't disappear yet, but that's the gist of it. Of course, we're, you know, we're not in pre-alpha yet, so this is just all kind of planning and visualization, and I'm very happy with how this is progressing and all coming together. <laughs> this song, I tell you, I just see the brood, you know, playing this song, looking like a bunch of rock stars. All, you know, we got 47 songs done for the mixed and mastered for the project. And, uh, you know, you don't have to play the music. You can play your own music. But uh, it definitely, the whole idea is that it really drives you. So we have three and a half hours of music composed for our first prototype. That was uh, 2008, 2007, 2008. So we're just kind of carrying on that uh, tradition of having a lot of unique, original driving, danceable music. All right, so that's the Brood Fortress. And the Brood Home Tree. And the Brood Throne. All right. Looking at the ocean, the rocks, the debris from the hole there. That's going to have a whole bunch of rock debris put in here. I think he's working on that right now. Looking up at the mountain. Across the mountain. All right, so talking about the development cycles plan. So the beautiful thing about this is that there is so much done. You know, and sometimes I guess I got to sit back and realize, we got a lot done. We got a lot figured out here. You know, that's really what makes this so much more special. Like even the big companies, like you think about the major game companies, the major game developers, they can't do this. You know, they are limited by money. And money is a huge limitation. In fact, I was reading something the other day and it said, before you're financed, that's where all the passion is because you're doing things for the right reason. When the money shows up, and I was actually shocked by this, the money shows up, now you're doing it for a different reason. And that's what I love about this project, is that we have spent all of this time ramping this up and making this super incredible. Like, there's no other game like this in the world. Like, this drives me. Every time I move around in the game, I'm like, wow, you know, this is possible, because these were all just ideas, and now it is a playable thing. So let's go back here. So we did a prototype, a live design prototype between 2005 and 2008. There were 34 people on that project. And then the market crashed in 2008. And 
the lead investor that we had, who was somebody from another game company, had sold his game company for a lot of money, and the, the publisher that we had, actually the publisher went belly up. They want, the, the, the company doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I was wondering, like, what happened to this company? But somebody told me that uh, when I was interviewing uh, last year. But anyways, from there, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you kind of, it pops your bubble because, you know, you can't go forward. And that, I got to say that probably that was the best thing that ever happened because then it was like, well, you know, we really need to get our game design done. We need to get deeper into our characters. So everybody kept saying that. Oh, what's your story? What's, what's the depth of your characters? Your characters are one dimensional. You hear all that kind of stuff, but you don't really understand, well, how do you take it deeper? You know, even right now we're struggling with the whole idea that this has to be character driven. What does that mean? You know, um, I do some writing, but I don't call myself a writer. We have a great writers team, and we're all still struggling with this idea of what is character driven. So then, uh, I did a marketing uh, market tour. So we had a standalone, installable, boxed uh, original version. It had five rotating levels, and I toured that around at LAN parties. And there's something incredible about playing a game in the room where you're in the room with everybody. They're not just online uh, and typing comments. They are shouting comments. And do you hear it? And all of that stuff went into our game design to shape it. And then, you know, we did our prototype number two. That's Bear Isle. You can watch some of my older videos on that. And then from there, we did our acceptance criteria. That's taking our game design document... So, and, and, you know, to understand the game design it wasn't just a one-time thing. It's been many, many years of refining to get to where we are. But the acceptance criteria is something extremely special because it's not just a blank game design document. And I've heard some amazing things about our game design document, but I think the acceptance criteria takes it to the next level. Because what's happening with the, the acceptance criteria, it's saying, as a gamer, you know? And then I get to make a statement about what I want to have in a game. And I, I'm just going to say something here. This might be shocking. And that's that games suck. Games are terrible. Games treat people terrible. Games take your money and they don't give you anything in return. And that's what those, those things that I just said, that's what I wanted to solve with this. And that's what our acceptance criteria solves. So now we've stepped into our streaming television show development. We've got a, a growing writing team. Uh, we meet every week. Uh, we, you wouldn't believe the number of scripts that we have and the things that we have on the go. We have a, we have a short uh, promotional video on the go. Uh, we've got a TV, streaming TV series on the go. All these things are happening. And then what I'm showing you today is our vertical slice, which is almost finished. And we're at the point where, you know, do we keep fixing, you know, polishing a turd, so to speak, or do we move on? And we've decided as a team to move on. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I've got my idea. Um, let's just say that that um, we're going to the very top and we're going to ask the very top people, what should we do next and, and get their advice before we decide to do what in, in this little part here. But we're already into pre-alpha. The guys are just kicking butt. And I really didn't expect us to change gears that easy but that's what's happened so anybody joining the project this is where you're joining right here after the vertical slice we spent all this time on this we've been team building all of these years and now we are building the pre-alpha so the pre-alpha is going to be four maps three of them are playable you know the gameplay and one is the training area and then from there we go to alpha and this is where we begin to have something that we can show the publisher and then from beta on everything is cash flow positive that's what the, you know i was challenged by the lead investor he says i want to see cash flow by beta and i said nobody does that and then i kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it, it took me about three months to come up with a way to make this cash flow by beta but we've done it and in fact you know we're working on the, the quest line now and we're talking about the pre-alpha quest line and it's already going to be cash flow, not positive, but cash flow ability in pre-alpha. Now, I didn't color this green. I didn't color alpha green because that's not the plan. But I'm just saying, when you put a team of people on something, these things tend to, once you figure them out, they tend to solve themselves. So that's very cool. Anyways, okay. 
So I'm just yapping away today. I, I'm just overly excited. So anyways, let's wave hello. Oh, my headset was uh, stuck on my chair. And uh, there we go. Let's jump into Unreal here. It's so funny, I went to do this and Microsoft pops up, put in your pin to verify it you. I'm like, I'm going live here. <laughs> like, what the heck is that? Microsoft has turned into some incredibly evil, terrible company. I got a, a new uh, laptop to go pitch to investors and somehow they've attached it to my old laptop and they've put the things around my old tap into my new laptop. I'm like, what's going on? So anyways, um, I'm not a very happy guy with Microsoft these days, but okay. So, um, okay, so I'm just gonna forget about this monitor over here. I'm just gonna turn it off. So I wear these glasses because I'm having very big issues with this, these blue light monitors. And uh, I just wanna warn everybody that the blue light is a very scary thing. So here we are in the game. It's gonna hit Alt P and let it come up. I'm gonna play as Suiel today on the brood side. And I'm gonna just do the quest line. Now, when the game was performing, before we started putting all the models into it, the game was performing a lot better. I was playing as two characters on one computer and I was showing the Throne Wars gameplay and uh, we've lost that ability. So if you're really interested in that, I do. I did do that a couple weeks ago, but the performance is really poor. But this is all looking very good. And as long as I play one guy, you know, it performs just fine. So I'm just gonna run through the, the fortress here. Okay, so let's just show a couple things. So this is your walk. And it seems incredibly slow. This map is two times too big. That's another issue. Okay, so now I'm gonna fast run. You can see when I pick up a red shield, it's showing just a red shield. I think it was showing me. It was showing my core shield too, anyways. Okay, so as I come up the path here, now everything's got to come downhill. There it is. Cut. So I'm just going to walk so I can grab him. Ooh, there's a bag. I'm not used to going this way. So only 14 pets. So I just realized something. That the brood, uh, even though their pet starts at the same time the kin does, because you're coming from the opposite side, you know, think about it. So the pep is going down this way on the kin, and so you start at the top, well, you know, it's moving away from you. But the brood, it's moving towards you. That's very interesting. Anyways. Oops, sorry. I, I haven't updated this guy yet. There is a new, new version, and I'm very sorry that I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to push E here. Be careful not to move. The code in our game is still very placeholder-ish very early stage. Alright, so let's go play some of these guys. Alright. So I need to get used to Scott's tree placement here. Now this is random, so this will be different every time. Nose in the tree. Say a nose in the book. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but there's the, some come, some um, a, some animation. That was the penalty. Nose in the book, and it's on your nose in the book. Just kind of. Oh, All right. And there's a lot of things. I'm just kind of thinking about the future of the game. Things I can't even show you yet. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the prints. I'm just using a recoil device, and I let go of my space bar. You see, I fall when I push space. I go up. I fall, and then I can push it in the air. Why? Well, technically, I should have wings. But this is Suiel. 
Let's get her in the life. And so she does not have lane. <laughs> it doesn't look, doesn't look good with the waypoint she went to. Oh well. And I gotta say, I, I love this job. Uh, what I was doing before this was building houses, and I tell you, it's just a terrible thing having to go somewhere every day just to make money. Such a terrible thing. All right. Okay, I gotta pay attention because I can't move one in this mode. Oh, so she knows I'm brood. I didn't even look at the, what the light of print is going on. So she's going to ask me to go get some letters. So I'm going to do this just like it's ready. And I don't know how far we're going to get with this. We still got a bit of stuff to do. But there's going to be some guards out front. And so you're going to want to come in from the back here where they can't see you. And I'm just using a recoil device to kind of perpetuate myself. Did you see my flowers? They even smell nice. Do you smell? Yeah. Just smell. They all smell different. I'm kidding. You can't smell. It's a scratch and, and sniff. <laughs> and, and on that point, this whole thing is about having fun. People get way too serious in life. And, uh, you know, we treat people right. That's what this is all about. We treat the gamers right. We treat the developers right. We treat the, treat the investors right. We treat the publisher right. So now she's going to tell me how great she is, but of course I'm unamused. And uh, I'll show you what pushing G repeatedly means. Don't forget to like kitten. I'm not a kitten. Alright, just using the recoil device and the space bar. I don't even have my hands on the controls. And, you can see. and it's nice how you can land like that. I love that. Okay. So here's the thing I gotta pick up, but here's the thing. I can push G and look at my character, but while I'm looking at my character, something else is happening. And that's when I push G. You see things falling from the sky? You get a candy? Well, those are power ups. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so this is the quest item, you can see. But there's all this city. Now it's not gonna be this simple. And see, I can't even pick these two up, see? Because I can only get one return, and I can only get two. Now, I'm gonna show you a secret, because this my, my stream's all about showing secrets. So I'm gonna just switch over to Notability. Turn it on, turn it off. And I can pick it up. Now, I only can go to max 80. But I did just pick that up so somebody else can have it. Now that is five times damage. So, you know, you don't want to be picking that up. So there's a little secret for people that are watching my stream. Just a little secret. And, you know, I just actually came up with that one right now. So, okay. So the, the quest is to return here again. And remember, we're going to have guards in front, and we're going to have the captain, you saw those images in the beginning, guarding us. So what I need to do is I need to push my over button, which is, you know, one of my uh, arrow keys. And I want to turn on not with, and now I am invisible. Not completely, but enough. Now, if the captain is here, and this is what I'm going to tell the guys, when the captain is here, uh, he's going to catch you. I don't care if you're invisible or not. So you need to stay away from the captain. But the two guards here. Oh, I'm running out of time. Actually, I don't because. <laughs> okay. It's gonna land on this little island here, and we're gonna go see this beautiful. Unipay. She's so beautiful. Now the textures on that are still, you know, very rough. And, uh, you know, it was, this was done by a junior model. But, you know, this is the whole thing about this game. 
is, you know, we've got these ideas, and so it's all forces. Right, so I'm going to have a little talk with her. And she says I'm way down by something golden, so that's the golden apple she wanted. So I'm just going to push that. And she's going to eat it. So we've got some eating animation that's not all, all in here yet. So we've kind of given up on doing all that until we get a proper class system in. So I'm going to turn to her. I'm going to change to my hog. So this is my hog. And I push Q. And then I got to talk to her again. And she says I can right and left click mouse. Mouse click this for it's a powerful forward and reverse. And like her, it's even faster in the end. So that's all good. So she's going to send me to the next quest. Now let me just show you this real quick. So yes. Oops, that was a little laggy, sir. It's because I'm near the water. Okay, so you can see. There we go. Close to the water. So you can see there's a little bit of recoil there pushing me back and forth. But watch me in the air. <laughs> That's pretty damn foul. Alright. So I need to go check out this turned over hut here. Examine this broken branch over here. Look at the little burning fires. No, you can't look at that burning fire. I know you don't want to. But you gotta come all the way over here. A specific reason for this. And there's that little burning fire. Alright. Hey! I just guessed about how this is lined up. Oh, okay, so I still gotta go forward a little bit with it. I did get that done today. And then I gotta go talk to this guy. Hey, little guy. So let's zoom in. He's tiny. So he's going to be able to stand on your shoulder. We'll put real fur on them once we get to the next version of Unreal. Oh no, we recognize your kind. You're one of that enslaved and hurt us. Yeah, because I'm playing Brew, right? So that's the evil ones. I don't, I've never done this quest as Brew. Don't shoot the birds or you'll be sorry. Okay. And that's a note to you. I mean, I know enough to shoot him. And I mean, we don't even have that working. Yet. So all we got now is we got a couple flying around. I'm just using this device to get up the mountain a little faster. You can see it does move quite, quite a bit faster. Collect the redstone. Collect the yellowstone. Collect the Holy Grail. Um, oh, it's okay. It's going to say, isn't Holy Grail right? All right. Now, these are not MMO quests. Okay, let's make that very good. These are training quests. Train you how to play our game. And that might not make complete sense. That's okay. I'm well trained and I'm still learning. This game is a real challenge. I don't know if you've ever played Tribes, Tribes 2, Tribes, whatever the other name is, but um, there's this really interesting thing that when you are moving around, and if you get it just perfect, you can just pick up the flag and then take off with all this momentum, and I just love that. The only thing I didn't like about Tribes is that you would run out of juice. And then you'd be so slow, and that's just so people can catch you. <laughs> I think that's a little cheesy, actually. There we are. Okay, so that means I'm running out of energy. Oh, schmuck it. I'm going to switch to my rapid impact. I do want to use a recoil device to move around here. I guess that would be the other secret about our game. Is, you know, I mean, you can walk. You know, uh, if you like being bored and slow, then just walk around the game. Yeah, that's what you can do. I like things fast. It's so funny because I, I uh, had the game playing on the television, watching one of these streams, and it was actually right here. And it was looking like this, and I just turned, you know, I didn't watch this from the beginning. 
turned in. I don't man, that looks interesting. You know, having something in each canal. And it's very unique. And there's a very organic reason for that. And I think those legs are, are, are happening because of the water system. We really overdid this. I mean, it's beautiful, but yeah, it's, it's too much. And I like how you glide, lined right up and then you just... Just the opposite re recoil. And away you go. I can't remember. I don't think I've got uh, Marmosets over here yet. There we go. And then that's all I can do. Because the quest is broken. And at that point it shows you that uh, you have to go into the ground. And what you're supposed to do... Yeah, the gravity's feeling better. Things aren't perfect at first. We'll get it all fixed up. Alright. What you're supposed to do is come back and talk to this guy. But he still he doesn't know I got it done. And then he gives you that reward. And that reward is this. Oh yeah, Suyo, you can't quite see what's in your hand here, sorry. There it is. And I'm gonna just oh, hang on. Oh you know what I'm gonna do? I thought about this earlier. So I'm going over here because I'm thinking about exactly or not. Oh, that was nice. So I'm going to show you a reverse empire. Uh-oh. I missed that. Okay, we don't need to worry about it. Just hold down the space bar. We've got an incredible uh, jump ability in the game. So what I like about this, it's probably the most incredible setup of any game you know, because most games you don't have wings. You know, you don't have recoil devices. I mean, I play another game and I'm like, oh, <laughs> boring. So I'm going to capture the enemy's throne. So this this is actually something that we're going to show in our first little promotional thing. She's going to get onto this throne. So I'm just going to go like that. Princess of Thunder. Okay, so now I've captured the enemy's throne first. Instead of my own. And I've walked into a big rock. Okay, I'm going to just go for a run down the path. Uh, a lot of these songs, like this one here, these were written for streamers. So I've used the streamer's name and then wrote a song very specifically for them. And then I gave them their songs and said, use this to promote your stream. Of course, they're songs from our game. It's kind of like a cross promotion. You see, I'm picking up Pip faster than us. Now I'm just walking. Remember I showed you walking in the beginning? And I showed you how uh, slow it was? Well, this is just walking. I am just walking. Okay, now I'm going to run. It's like, wow, that's, that's a little extreme. So when Brood creates a stronghold... They change it to lava. Okay, so I've got uh, 23 pep. You see it slowly. And this is kind of revolutionary because when you play other games, it's going to go 30 and it's going to stop. Until I lose one. <laughs> there it is, back to 30. And I'm going to push fast run. This is going to make me very fast. Maybe too fast. Maybe it's because the map is so big. Okay, I, I can't go fast anymore. A little bit here, a little bit here. Up 
the lamps. Okay, here you go. So jump on the middle. That's another little secret. I'm just gonna push G, turn it around. So yeah, that's the secret is, is you point her away. Oh, we gotta get eyes. Like now listen to this. Queen of Dominations. There's a reverse empire right there. So you see what I did? I captured the enemy's throne first. I created a stronghold. I captured my own throne. And because I, I had the other throne, I created... I went right from a strong... Um, Right from a kingdom to an empire. That's what we call a reverse empire. And, uh, it's a very unique technique for playing the game. So, this, this stuff is highly intelligent. You know, you can't expect everybody to understand this stuff, but... I can't We gotta appeal to a high level of intelligence. So now, that's the, the, the scepter that I got from the little monkey. Different kind of a lightning attack. You can see the water building up there. Getting a little bit of a lightning gate. As soon as I can just push T, I get this menu. And I can place another lightning throne. I can place a fire throne. I can place a ice throne. I can place a storm throne. And I can place them up or down or whatever I want. Now watch what happens. I place lightning. It's going to change to the lightning because that's more powerful. This, this is Zach's. I can't quite see that. Zach's lightning. Scepter. We'll have a whole bunch of them. Fire. Ice. Storm. Isn't that cool? And then, so I'm just placing thrones. And I can place thrones all the way across. So you create a dynasty by holding your em empire. Sorry, your, <laughs> your empire for a certain amount of time. I had to think about that. All right. It's this nice little camping area too. Uh, there is no, uh, not an active recoil here. So uh, this would be a good place to use a device that doesn't have recoil, like the Stingray. And then I can put a bunch of Stingers down there on the path. And then when the enemy's coming, and then I got bouncers too. Right click. And they're they're not heat seeking at the moment, they will be. H2 is a non-recoil device. So it's gonna shoot water. Kind of like a water gun. The barrels are gonna spin, and that is like a minigun. And the hog is recoil. The claw. So let's just let's push G so you see my character. Oh. So yes, yeah, she's standing on. Yeah, we did simple collisions, so that's why she looks like she's full. So I'm gonna push the recoil. You're gonna see she's got a bit of a shield. So this is a good way to kind of come into the enemy side. We're shooting at you. As long as you got that in front of you, you can fly a bit, a little bit with this. It's a little crazy. As you can see, it takes a little while. So the other thing you can do with that, so let's say I'm going into the enemy base. Now, you can, I'm not going to hold G while you do this. I'm just doing this to show you. You can right-click this. So I'm running forward. Right-click. And I have my shield around myself completely for a few seconds. And you're invulnerable. Uh, now, a couple things will damage you. And that is stingers and icicles can go through. So stingers. Oh, stingers. Now you saw I picked up another device, and that's the agony. And what's great about the agony is, of course there's no enemy in here, is if there was somebody standing up on that mountain, I could go grab them and pull them down here. So leggy. 
So that's interesting. Anyways. Lots of little so I'm going to show one little secret at the end. I know I tried to show a secret last week, and I haven't checked it out for a long time. It's epically failed. But hey, whatever. It's my story. My follow epically failed. Oh, epically failed. So right underneath this waterfall. So you see, there is the Kin Castle and the throne room. And if you come to this waterfall, you can see the already. There is a rare Now what's so powerful about rare energy? Well, look at this. So remember when I had some issues running out of energy with this guy? I can't see the, the numbers. We'll, we'll get all that stuff fixed up. But... Anyways, if I run out of energy, it's going to change to that rare, and that's going to be backup energy. Also, that's good for the devices in the pit. So let's go up to one of the towers. Let's go wait for the lift. Here it comes. It should have elevator music. On. Take you all the way up. And then you get off. And now we do have what's called anti-recoil here. Which means I can shoot the I can shoot the recoil device. And of course I can zoom in, look at some enemies coming up. Fire some shots. Now everything's gonna be subject to change. This is all this early stage development. Let's walk the plank. We should actually make people do this and walk the plank. Alright. And I'm in the water. Okay. I'm gonna let her go and then we'll come back to that. Alright, so make sure you go to iPointmore.com, sign up for our video game Test of Thunder. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, share, comment and uh ring the bell all that good stuff so you know what's going on and uh you know there is going to be a massive amount of excitement when we roll out our first multiplayer and that's going to be those three levels that uh that uh i showed earlier and uh so that's very exciting and so make sure you sign up and get involved in that and uh, we'll let you know when and I'm just gonna tell you there's a lot of people signed up so it's going to be uh, a mass rush we're only gonna put up a test server and there's only gonna be so many people allowed in it and uh, so you know come early or you won't get in but anyways uh, thanks for watching it's Vindicator and I